Welcome to the Matt O'Grady Coaching Podcast. This is where Matt shares all his ideas on how to be happier, more successful, and enjoy life to the fullest. Please go to mattogradycoaching.com and the livinggratitudebook.com to learn more and receive your free micro coaching session with Matt. Hello and welcome to the Matt O'Grady Coaching Podcast. Matt O'Grady coaching.com. So, welcome to the latest installment of Abraham 101. Uh, essentially, this is taking some of the Abraham Hicks teachings and pulling out one specific, basic, kind of introductory, important aspect and talking about it because. I find it fascinating. A lot of my coaching clients are familiar with Abraham Hicks, and uh, for the better part of a lot of our sessions, we discuss uh, the teachings. I say, I think I'm doing it, but it's not working. (laughs) I think I think I'm. I think maybe sometimes I'm doing it, but I'm not really sure. How do I know? So one of the coolest things that I think Abraham talks about is this idea of the receptive mode. I really find it fascinating because it's so simple, it's so easy, it's so direct, right? Receptive means in uh, a mode where you can receive, right? If you're receptive, there's a receptacle, if you will, to receive what you're asking for from the universe, from your higher self, from life, you know, it doesn't have to get too spiritual or too um, down that path if, if you're not comfortable with it. It's really just understanding that we're all human beings, we all have desires, and we're all attempting to receive what we want into our lives. So why not be in that so-called receptive mode? I really find that the vortex, many of you know about that, and we've done Phil and I did a bunch of shows about it years ago, and uh, we've done um, uh, quite a few podcasts on this kind of idea of feeling good, right? Being in a place where you are open, where you're feeling relief and happiness and joy. And the truth is, that's all the receptive mode is, is turning your attention towards what feels better towards what is good, towards what feels good, and allowing yourself to really feel that goodness, to take it down deep into yourself, to wring it out, to milk it, to really stay in that space. And you have to learn how to focus your attention. So if you're not practicing awareness, if you're not practicing how to focus your attention, staying in the vortex or being in the receptive mode is probably going to be difficult for you because if you're not in uh, a present state of mind, if you're not aware of what you're thinking and feeling, it's hard to know if you're in the receptive mode. So what a lot of people do is they uh, do a gratitude practice for three seconds and say, I'm grateful for that. Okay. I was I was grateful. Great. Now can I be in the receipt? Now I should receive everything I want, right? That's you know I'm okay. Where is it? Where is it? Well, we have to be a little bit more patient than that. We have to really let the vibration of receiving move through us. We have to invest our time and attention in staying in that mode for as long as we possibly can so that we can start to see the physical manifestations, get the phone calls, the emails, the gifts, the abundance, the whatever it is that we want, that relationship, that business turning around, that uh, that big check you've been waiting for, that, you know, that news, that good news you've been waiting for. We've got to stay in the receptive mode. And so, that's that's really what the receptive mode is. It's really this state of always aiming to feel better. What is the next best feeling thought that you can think of right now? Right now, as you're listening to this podcast, let's do some work. Let's do it. It's fun. 
it's not like real work. It's just practice. It's just the practice, right? We have to practice being in the receptive mode. So right now, I'm going to be quiet for all of three seconds and ask you to think about a better feeling thought than you just were a moment ago. Hopefully, you were able to find something, right? We don't have to work so hard at this. It's really just a simple practice of redirecting our attention. Now, because we have patterns that go in the other direction, worry, concern, stress, more worry on top of it, oh, let's add in some fear and some doubt and some some awe, shock, and terror, you know, um, we add some of that in. Where are you? Are you in the receptive mode when you're, you know, really depressed about, you know, ISIS? Um, are you in the receptive mode when you're really worried about what's going on with your job or really worried about what's going on with your relationship. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble here, but you are definitely not in the receptive mode of all you desire if you're in a worry, stress, fear, doubt kind of state. Those states resist life. That is resistance. Yeah? You're just, you're, you're, you're telling the, the powers that be, okay, that you don't want what you're asking for. In fact, since I'm focusing on this worry, you're actually saying, please give me more of that. Please give me more of what I don't want. That is what worry is. Fear. Please give me more fear. When you just allow yourself to stay in a perpetual state of fear, stress, worry, doubt, you are just telling everyone, not just the universe or something out there, you're telling everyone you meet, give me more of what I don't want. So if you want to continue down that path, that's your choice. I highly recommend you make a different choice and you start to notice, become aware of what you're thinking and feeling, what your stress levels are, and find ways to relax it. There's no better job for you. There's no better task. There's no better project in your whole entire life than practicing awareness so you know where your emotional GPS is pointing so that you can direct your ship, be the captain of your own ship, be the captain of your own life, and begin directing your life, designing your life in the direction that you want to take it. And the truth is, it is so much simpler than anyone would ever really tell you. And that's what I've been saying on this podcast for six years, is six plus years now, is it's easier than you think. It is not that hard. It really is as simple as okay, I'm here right now. There's a certain level of acceptance that we need to have. It's, it can be momentary, though. You don't have to be in acceptance mode for days or hours or even consecutive minutes. It's just an awareness that when your awareness deepens, the acceptance process is really inherent within it. You say, hey, this is where I am in this moment. How does that feel? Let's do that as an exercise right now. How do you feel? Define the emotion that you're experiencing right now. Okay, you got that. So where are you? No matter where you are, even if you're super happy, even if you're, you're very joyful in this moment, you can still go for deeper joy. But if you're in stress, worry, doubt, fear, depression, anger, you're in any of those states... I, frustration, overwhelmment, I would highly recommend that you simply reach for a better feeling thought. It can be anything. Just leave the past to the side for a moment, okay? Leave those old patterns that haven't served you for all these decades to the side for just a few moments and begin to focus on what brings you joy. And it doesn't have to be the thing that you want most in life. It can be how pretty the sun is on the green leaves outside my window right now. It can be the subtle breeze that's just moving through the trees that I can see just a little bit. Or the, the play of light and shadow 
I mean, the other day I was walking, I was told this story to one of my coaching clients, and I was literally walking and deciding, okay, I'm going to try to find the simplest things to be grateful for, to appreciate, to be interested in. And I started noticing the designs in the sidewalk cracks as I was walking, doing my meditative walk that I do every day. And I was just amazed. I'd never quite taken the time to notice them and to attempt to appreciate the cracks in the sidewalk, the dimensions, the shapes. I was thinking about all the people who have walked here before me, so many souls, how many times, hundreds of times I've walked on that very sidewalk as well. And just kind of sending out a connective message, a a well-wishing message to all the people that had walked on these sidewalks. And maybe they had seen those cracks too. And there's some really interesting abstract designs that I was noticing. It was just pleasing. The simplicity of life can be pleasing. And what's so amazing about going into the receptive mode on a really neutral, almost silly thing like that is that we don't have resistance to it. So we want to find the things in our lives, especially if we're really stressed out, if we're overwhelmed, if we're dealing with depression. Don't try to go for, okay, well, that's the Shangri-La of what I really want in my life. I'm going to focus on it all day, every day. No, because what you see more than anything is how you don't have it yet. So whether it's subconscious or subtle uh, or not, most of the time when you're really not in a great place but you focus on what you want most, you're actually adding resistance to it. You're actually moving away from it. That's why you don't see it come through to your life. As Abraham says, it's a, it can be you know, a castle or you know, a, a button. It doesn't matter, right? We can manifest anything in any moment. The simple formula is the strength of our desire and focus and how that equals up with our resistance And then that equals the manifestation or not. So if we can just work on lowering the resistance a little bit, because our desires are pretty strong most of the time, right? When we want something, we want it. You feel that, right? You can certainly increase that desire. You can do a rampage of appreciation. You can really get into the alignment of what you want most and get into like a big party about it. And I think that's great too. However, sometimes I found that that the simplest path to something we want is often the best. Just finding a way to have the body be relaxed, have the heart be in a nice, chillaxing kind of space, then just find some things to appreciate. You know, a smell that you appreciate, an aroma when you're cooking food, or the texture of something as you're cooking. I love to notice the fruits and vegetables, the textures of things and the smells as I'm cooking and chopping. And, you know, that just really moves me into the receptive mode. I just feel like it's such a smooth transition to enjoyment, to appreciating life, to getting me into the flow of my life, getting into that present state of mind where I know as I relax, and I'm just being, and I'm just accepting where I'm at, and I'm aware, and oh, but wait, I'm a little bit short on time, you know, just stick with the cooking example, oh, but let me just relax into it, I still have enough time, it's going to work out, right? So every once in a while, you're enjoying something, but if you're aware enough, you notice that first thought that starts to be more on the resistance side. And if you are aware enough, what you can do is just gently say, oh, that doesn't take me down the path that I want, right? That doesn't feel good. So I'm going to gently just move it back to what does feel good and just trust that it's all going to work out. Because then what happens is somebody, I get a text on my phone, we're running 10 minutes late. Oh, perfect. (laughs) Uh, You know, the time that I thought I didn't have, I have now. And that's how life works. If we just stay in this receptive mode as much as possible all day long, then our life just starts to end up so much smoother. I mean, I, you guys know, I haven't done a podcast in the last few weeks and been really busy with my digital marketing business. We're just taking on some really big, exciting projects and I needed to focus my attention there. And it feels good to focus my attention there because it's very abundant, very exciting. And, very inspiring. So 
I'm just really enjoying this process of building my digital marketing business into a seven-figure company. And as I do that, it feels amazing because I took it from nothing. In fact, I took it from a few hundred thousand dollars in debt to something that is uh, much greater than that per year now. And so it's, it's just so exciting to be living that dream. You know, 10 years ago, it was just a sparkle in my eye. And now it's a business and I've got like 15 people on the team and it's just amazing. It just feels so good. So, Anyway, I share that example with you to share something that's a little more intricate, a little more detailed, a little more, you know, a whole lot more aspects and people and things going on than the cooking example. But for me, it's still the same thing. It's taking that simple application of the cooking and applying it to my business that has a lot of moving parts, a lot of people, a lot of clients, a lot of employees, a lot of opportunities, a lot of tasks and projects, literally thousands of tasks and projects. And so if I got caught up in, you know, worrying about is it all going to work out, well, guess what? I'm just going to be start sending the energy that way. So that's not what I want. So I gently, lovingly, kindly, with focus and confidence and faith, I move my attention towards what feels good in my business, what feels enjoyable. And for all the things that I don't enjoy in my business, I simply hire people to handle those things. Because when I take my attention off the stuff that I find frustrating and I give it to someone else who enjoys doing it and is enjoying the opportunity to do it, I no longer am vibrating that aspect of the energy. So I can just kind of stay in this mode of project management that I love and sales that I love and working with clients and working on the creative aspects of the business with my team members and just just doing that, you know? Oh, we have a new website, by the way, harmoniamedia.com. Check it out. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love for you to get on the email list there and uh, give me your thoughts about what you think of the new website, colors, logo, et cetera. Uh, the MattoGradyCoaching.com website is still the same. If you want to reach out to me or talk about the Abraham 101s or coaching or anything else, uh, any question that you have about anything, I am happy to give you my absolute best answer over email. Just hit the contact button, send me a message, upper right-hand side. So as we get closer to wrapping this up, I want you to think about a few things as it relates to the receptive mode is first awareness. Without awareness, we are not able to direct and design our lives. It is absolutely necessary. So practice awareness. It's easy. You just focus on your on the body. You just relax. You just notice what you're thinking and feeling. That's it. That's literally it. Summed up in less than 10 seconds, the awareness practice. If that's what you do to practice awareness, you're doing it, right? Don't get into, oh, mindfulness and there's the 27 steps to being more mindful. No, listen, you don't need the 27 steps. You just need the simplest steps, the first three. Focus on your body, your breath, your emotions, and your thoughts. That's it. Just just notice what's going on for you in this moment. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What are you vibrating? Then you know if you're pointed up towards the receptive mode or down towards the resistant mode, right? Where are you at? And once you're, you understand where your emotional GPS is, is pointing, you understand where you are in this very moment, then you can start to choose to direct yourself where you want to go. And you can do that simply by finding something that is interesting, something that is fun, something that feels like relief or joy or happiness or even a low level of enjoyment. You know, I was just, my, my son this morning brought me an old photo album, pictures 15, 20 years ago. Oh my God, it was so great to see my family, to see my friends, to see me interacting with them, holding these babies or my arms around people who are no longer with us in body and just just seeing those people, seeing what my life was, seeing some of the beauty 
that was in my life years ago and explaining who the people are to my son. Some of them he knows, some of them he's never met and will never meet in body. And so it's just an amazing experience. Life can be so great if we let it in. We have to let in what we want. We have to let the goodness and the beauty and the joy just gently flow in. And it's so simple. It's so simple, I promise you. All it takes is practice, focus, follow through, a little bit of faith, and sprinkle a little of that pixie dust of faith on it. Everything's always getting better and better. Thank you for listening. I love you guys. And we're almost at 400,000 downloads. Half a million is coming. Come on, baby. MassGreatCoaching.com. Talk to you soon. Peace. Home. Peace. Home. Peace.